Good morning. This, look at this sunshine. It has been so sunny here since I've gotten back. Uh, it's just wonderful spring. It's officially spring now, but it's starting to really feel like spring here. So we'll see what happens because weather, as we know, can change. I think I'm going to take you along for a day in the life of. Um, I've got quite a bit to do. I'm all unpacked now, which is wonderful. I packed the first night, unpacked the first night I was here and I've got everything settled in, so that's nice. I've got to run some errands today for my local clients, so I'm gonna do that. And then I've got to do some things in my van, so I'm having an issue with my van. The side sliding door doesn't open anymore. Before, I had to open it from the inside, but now it's not opening at all. The rear door, I have to open from the inside. I've got two kind of walls in the back of the seat, so I'm gonna remove those today because I've gotta move like my suitcase and some other larger things and it's almost impossible. And then in the spring or summer, I'm going to have to figure out how to get those doors working. I've watched some videos about it and it's not really that hard. It's just, I need to do it. So anywho, let's see what we get into. having to take apart a lot of the wall section. Well, I'm taking the whole wall out. So I'm taking this wall out. And so I'm having to take all the screws apart and it's making me so sad. It's my Maribel I'm having to take apart. If you've been watching a while, you know that I like way, way, way back, I used to mention that I have leaks in the ceiling. And when I did this rebuild, I filled in the, the leaks as much as I could. Um, but there's still some, you know, water is very per pervasive. So, um, so pretty much all the wood that's left in here is molded. I took a lot of it out in the fall and built the projects that I did in my studio, which is great. So I was able to salvage most of the good wood. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, the two doors that don't open in the back, I'm going to have to take out the kitchen area anyways to access the sliding door, which is kind of annoying, but I'm just going to have to do it. I think I'm going to probably strip the whole um, van apart and see what wood I can salvage and, you know, otherwise I'll have a big bonfire down at the beach. <laughs> Walls are down. You can see the back now. Huh. Sad.
y'all. I fin just finished working and I'm just relaxing. And I don't know if you remember, if some of you may have seen my video where my mom sent me this care package and she sent me this cute little box and it came broken. So I'm gonna try to fix that. And then my friend Angie and her mom sent me some china and in the mail and it came, a couple pieces broke. So I'm gonna try to fix that. Now I have some other, I actually have some other china. Now I'm feeling inspired. <laughs> I have some other pieces that Angie and her mom sent me. I've got three different pieces. I'm gonna kind of see what I can fix. So let me evaluate and then I'll show you. All right, so I've got these three different things. This was a teacup. I don't know if I'm going to be able to repair this. Look at all the little pieces. And then I've got this. This was a, I believe, a. Sh this is the bottom of that top. It's a sugar bowl. And then here is a gravy bowl. So I think I might start with this because then it will go with the top that I'm repairing. And the pieces are kind of bigger. So I think I might do that. Have you all heard of the Japanese term kintsugi? It's literally called gold. It's gold seams is what it translates to. It's a traditional Japanese um, technique that, that repairs like broken things. And um, they glue them back together and then they use with like a golden uh, lacquer and paint and then they paint it gold. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna put some images here of examples. I feel like and it's like if something breaks and you can repair it, why not fix it? Especially if it's a treasure. So I'm going to do my best to fix these. So let's see if we can fix them. Should be tacky now. Well, let's see if I can remember which way to put it on. Doesn't seem. Yeah, it's a little bit tackier. That's good. Oh, shoot. it says Japan. Uh, isn't that cool? Let's see if that'll work that way. Okay, now I was getting hangry, so it was time to make some dinner. I'm going to make some tofu, honey sriracha tofu. And here are the ingredients for the dish. I'm using extra firm tofu here that has been frozen and defrosted. Some honey, I got this honey in Oklahoma City. Sriracha, we've got some uh, cornstarch, butter, olive oil, lemon juice, and some soy sauce. 
Let's start with the orzo. I'm going to make it in the rice cooker. I've never done this before. I looked it up and I'm using one cup of orzo to two cups of water. And then I'm adding a tablespoon of olive oil and a pinch of salt. Now for the tofu, we're going to take it out of the package. I always do it over the sink and I don't have any paper towels. I never seem to have paper towels. <laughs> so I just do it with my hands. I mean, it's really simple. With the frozen tofu, it doesn't really take that long to get all of the liquid out. Then I'm going to break it into bite-sized pieces. You could also just cut these into like one inch squares, but I like to do it this way because I feel like it takes on the flavor more. And then I'm adding two tablespoons of cornstarch and a tablespoon of soy sauce. Then mix it up really well so that all of the pieces are covered. Now let's get to cooking. You're going to put uh, two tablespoons of olive oil into your favorite skillet and let that heat up. Once it's heated, go ahead and add the pieces of tofu individually. I always, you, you know, I spread them out really well so that they're gonna cook thoroughly. And then once they start browning, make sure that the heat isn't too high so that they don't get too brown too quickly. You wanna do this like really slowly. While they're cooking, we're gonna make the sauce. To a small bowl, we're gonna add a quarter cup of butter, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and three tablespoons of honey. Then we'll add two teaspoons of sriracha, a teaspoon of lemon juice, a teaspoon of cornstarch, and mix it all up really well. Once the tofu is all golden brown and crunchy, we're gonna add the sauce to the tofu. Give it a good stir. And let it simmer for about four or five minutes. Now it's time to plate our delicious food. I'm out of green onions, so I topped it with a little bit of parsley from my window garden and some pepper flakes. And here you go, delicious honey sriracha tofu with orzo.